There are a lot of Americans with digestive problems. The role of uh, immune health to digestion is much more directly connected, I think, than most people would probably consider. And the reasons are, other than breathing air, which goes immediately into us, and that could be contaminated, we eat food, and God knows what's in the food, and everything we take in our body stays a long time. We have all these layers of cells and the villi in your, in your bowel, they say it covers a football field of square of surface area. And what if that's interacting badly with things? What if you got infections that have got started? What if you don't have the right bacteria? What if you got an H. pylori, you know, someone one most people know about going on? Well, you know, it's, it can be a huge problem. You think you got a football field of absorption and you got problems all over, well you can imagine what that looks like inside. It takes down your immune health because your immune health, your immune system, your white blood cells, your phagocytes, your macrophages, your T cells, uh, eosinophils, basophils, all these are different types of for your protection. Well, if they're spending all their energy and you're fighting stuff constantly while well, you're worn down, pretty soon you might run out of something. Then the bad guys take over and they take over to different degrees of detriment. For people to keep their immune system healthy and strong uh, in today's culture requires more than one step. I would recommend if you have an acute infection coming on to do 20,000 units of vitamin D a day for about three days and stop, your body will retain that and it releases white blood cells. But you also need, you need zinc and then vitamin C taken five times a day for about five days. And that's the best way in my opinion to bring your immune system up to speed as quickly as possible. When one looks at immune health from an evolutionary viewpoint, we were much more physically active, you know, a thousand years ago, even a hundred years ago than today. And we were exposed to a lot more pathogens, if you will. Our immune system was being stimulated in many ways more than it is today. We have a lot of new things on the planet, never before on the planet, artificial things, you name it, that weren't present. But still, an evolutionary viewpoint, stay busy, stay healthy, do manual work, exercise, we will call it today. My favorite way to exercise is, it's a little odd, but I like gardening. I like growing things and you know, digging in the ground and planting things. If someone is struggling right now with motivation to become healthier, shall we say, or exercise more in anything, they need to start out slowly and gradually. But it also could be incredibly psychological. They're just weighed down, they're burnt out, and they really need to look at the lifestyle and look at a change. What people can do today is to stay uh, physically active, breathing good air, avoiding unnatural ingredients. We don't know the full role that the new unnatural ingredients might be playing in causing cancer. And even from the psychological perspective, there are scientific studies showing if you have more pain and more fear in your life, um, then you're more likely to get a cancer and less likely to even recover from it. The mind-body connection is absolutely correct. It's accurate. And it's a two-way street. You know, if you, if you trip over something, hurt your leg, twist your ankle, you're gonna feel bad. Well, if you feel bad, you're more likely to trip over something and twist your ankle and hurt yourself. It is a two-way street that I have found. So the mind-body connection is very real. Uh, on the other hand, it's such a tricky thing. If you feel something, you don't wanna like just totally deny like it ever happened. You wanna react to it, but you don't want to retain it. Someone can create anything they want, their thoughts and their emotions. And it takes a little practice. We're not particularly used to that in the Western society, but just being appreciative, gratitude, right? Taking your time and slowing things down so that you can enjoy the plant, be happy that you have the computer, that you can get to someone on an email and see what's going on, appreciating what we have, that we can use it and appreciating other people and never downing yourself. Never. For a leaky gut problem, keep in mind the gut is supposed to be leaky to a degree. We have to take in all our good nutrition, right? But what about when bad things get in like bacteria and 
food products that aren't supposed to be there that we are reacting to. So a food that's not right for them could be a problem. Again, an H. pylori that's running you know, all over the place could be a problem. Candida could be a problem. But it is, I think, directly related to overall immune health because it takes it down. And you don't, one might not have any reserve left to fight something else that would come along, even a common cold. For a lot of people do not sleep very well, as most people will acknowledge, they know someone or maybe themselves that don't sleep well. Uh, my number one sleep medication is magnesium. It has to be in a capsule form, it cannot be an oxide, it has to be so it's absorbable. Magnesium helps people sleep. Uh, and, but often it's also not what people need to take to sleep better, it's what they need to stop doing. So if they're drinking four cups of coffee, especially later in the day, uh, maybe they got too much caffeine. Maybe they're doing other products that are stimulants that they shouldn't. Maybe they're like so obsessed about their work or you know in fear of their job or something or some pressure. Well, that's going to keep you awake. So again, there are many possible reasons for someone not sleeping. And I like to look at them all and address them all. A lot of people are overweight today and the number one thing they can do in my opinion is start walking very simple just walk I don't care if it's a half a block start becoming physically active it does something it makes the bowels move but there are many potential reasons if you're constantly fighting things from your GI system you can have chronic inflammation which is going to set up plaque anywhere in your body, any organ or your arteries themselves. And of course that would be a heart block and a heart attack or even a stroke. As far as meditations, there are single point meditations where you look at one thing, you know, and you focus on that only. Then there's no point meditations where you have nothing in focus. But I wouldn't even do those until contemplations are done. Contemplation. To contemplate the things that are most important to them in the world. The technique is you keep on asking why until you get no more whys. And you follow that back into your internal essence. One of the natural ways that you can boost your immune system and keep yourself generally healthy is to go outside and breathe fresh air and exercise. Move your body. I mean, we're like a sponge. You, know, you want everything moving. Uh, it, it, it does something, I think science still hasn't discovered the full extent that exercise helps the overall immune system and health. So I, I mean, I like to be in movement. I, I'm really someone else who is probably more me when I'm dancing and moving. And it could be all times. I, I just love it. And sometimes just watching things move, you know, if you're watching the ocean, the waves, there's something that you're still translating. Go to nature. You know, put it in its place. We have too much modern day data. The phone ringing constantly. Uh, you know, there's an on and off button for that phone. They still make on and off buttons. You know, I would say, pardon my French, but shut the sucker off. <laughs>